Hi, my name is Dorothy Pernu, and I'm the Government and Community Relations Manager for Duke Energy here in Citrus County and the surrounding areas. We are a proud sponsor of the Citrus County First Library Program. Literacy is so important to everything that we do from beginning to end. Um, it's the foundation for all learning for our children. And I encourage each and every one of the parents out there to read often and regularly to your kids. And today, we are going to read What Causes Weather and Seasons. We're going to have today Kate and Jack walk us through this process. Kate, I wish it was warm outside so we could go swimming, says Jack. Yeah, it's too bad it's not summer, adds Kate. Kate, why are there different seasons, asks Jack, and why is it so hot in the summer and so cold in the winter? I was wondering the same thing, replies Kate. I want to know what makes weather change so much and why trees lose their leaves in the fall. Let's look it up, exclaimed Jack. So here we got Kate, we've got Jack, they're in their room, Looks like it might be raining outside, right? What do you think his name is? I'm going to call him Spot because we're going to see him later in the book. The sun and the weather. Ooh, this is a pretty sky, isn't it? What do you think that is? Well, we're going to find out soon enough. The weather changes at different times of the year because of the sun. The sun is a huge ball of gas and fire at the center of our solar system. The sun's rays have been reaching the earth and giving us light and heat for billions of years. The sun makes it possible for all types of weather to occur, such as clouds and rain, wind and snow, and ice. The sun heats up the water on the ground and in the lakes, rivers, and oceans. The water drops rise up into the air, called evaporation, where they cool down, stick together, and form clouds. Did you know that? That's how we get clouds? When the clouds get really full of water, what do you think's gonna happen when they're full of water? It rains, that's right. Or, if it's really cold outside, it snows. Hmm, not here in Florida though. Pretty neat, right? This is called the water cycle. The earth spins. Here we've got the sun, we've got the earth, and it moves around the sun. The earth is a huge ball or sphere that spins around like a ballerina. All the same time as it's spinning, the earth moves around the sun in a giant circle called an orbit. It takes 365 days, that's one year, to complete one orbit around the sun. Then it begins all over again. The Earth's movements make the day and the night, as well as the four seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. Hmm. We have interesting here. Jack is sleeping and Kate is waking up. I wonder what we're going to learn here. Day and night, light and dark. It takes 24 hours or one day for Earth to make one complete spin or rotation. That's why we have day and night. When the part of the Earth where you live faces the sun, it is the daytime. And when it faces away from you, the sun, it's the nighttime. That's how we get day and night. Usually the sun heats up during the day and makes it warmer. At night, when the sun is gone, it's dark 
and the heat is then gone. So now the air is cooler. Now, how about those seasons? Remember? Spring, summer, fall, and winter? Why are there seasons? There is an imaginary line that wraps around the center of the earth like a belt. This line is called the equator. So you can see the sun here in the middle. And remember, the earth goes around the sun in an orbit. This is the equator, and so here you have the Earth going all the way around. And different things happen as it goes around, and that's what we're going to learn about. The equator divides the Earth into two parts, the north half and the south half, which are called the hemispheres. As the Earth orbits the sun, the heat and the light from the sun reach the northern and southern hemispheres differently. Hmm. This is why it is hot sometimes in some places while it's cold in other places. In the springtime, it comes right after winter. There is more sunlight now, so the earth heats up more during the day and the weather starts to get warmer. But the spring can have many different types of weather. Some days it can be really windy. And other days it can be rainy or even hail. We don't get hail very much here in Florida though. Some mornings are chilly, but it can become even warm or even hot later than the day when the sun shines brightly. Spring is kind of, it's got all kinds of weather, doesn't it? You can see here, you got the wind, you have the sun, you have rain. We don't have the hail picture and that's actually a good thing. Look at this picture. What happens in the spring? Ooh, life blossoms in the spring. During this season, leaves and beautiful flowers grow on many plants and trees. Fruit trees fill with blossoms, which will become delicious fruit in just a few months. Most insects begin to come out and the animals mate so that their young will grow up in the summertime when they'll have plenty of food to eat. So you can see all the animals are starting to come out. They're getting excited. They're getting some fruits and everything else. It's summer. When spring is over, summer begins. The days are long and the nights are shorter. So the sun warms us for more hours. Many growing fruits and vegetables are ready to be eaten and the sea water is also warmer. It's the best time to go swimming. In some places, however, the summer can be very hot and dry. This can cause what's called a drought, a long period of time when there is almost no rain. The lack of water during a drought can make it hard for people to grow food. Now, some of you may already know about that. You may hear your parents talk about drought, or um, you may know somebody who has a big garden and they say, it's not raining enough. My fruits and vegetables aren't growing. Well, it could be because it's a drought. Other things happening in the summer will help with the drought, and that is summer storms. During the summer, huge storms are common. Summer storms can appear quickly and do not last long. The sky gets dark, lightning flashes from very tall clouds, the thunder roars, and heavy rain falls for a few minutes. When it is over, the sky clears, and you may even see an amazing rainbow stretch across the sky. I love rainbows. I think they're so pretty, and I bet you've seen lots of rainbows, and you'll see many, many more as you get grow older. Something else you need to know about the summer is that with the sun, you need to be cautious. Summer means vacation, sun, and beaches. But beware, the sun is very strong in the summer, so it is important to protect your skin wherever you go outside. If you are going to be outside all day, especially at the beach, make sure you wear sunscreen. Also, 
It is better to try to stay in the shade during the middle of the day when the sun's rays are at their strongest. So go out and play at the beach in the morning and in the afternoon, but not in the middle of the day. Go inside and have your lunch instead. And then what happens after summer? We have the fall. In the Northern Hemisphere, fall begins in September and the weather changes again. The days are now shorter than the nights, so the sun doesn't warm things as much as it did in the spring and the summer. The weather starts to get chilly and the seas and the lakes get colder and colder. You probably don't want to go swimming then. Heck no. You can see Jack and Kate. Jack's putting on a coat and you can see they got the trees. The sky's changing a little bit. Wonder what we're going to learn about. Ooh, what else happens during the fall? Many birds migrate or fly together toward the equator to spend the fall and winter in warmer areas. They assemble into huge groups in the sky and often make a V-shaped as they fly. One example of migratory birds are swallows. The fall is when the grain and other crops are harvested or picked. These include wheat, barley, pumpkin, and chestnuts. We don't have chestnuts here in Florida though. You gotta go up north for those. What else is gonna happen in the fall? What do you think's gonna happen? Of course, there's gonna be falling leaves. In the fall, nature gets ready for cold winter weather. The leaves on many trees begin to change color, then turn brown, and later they fall off the branches and are left bare. This is how the trees protect themselves from the winter freeze. Insects also have been participating in preparing for the weather change. They stored their food underground during the summer so that they can survive the cold weather when they're not able to go outside or when there's less food. When fall gives way to winter, insects will keep themselves sheltered from the cold and their young will be born when the weather gets warm again. Kate and Jack are taking care of all the leaves in the yard and Spot is messing it up. Doesn't he? He just shows up at the most inopportune times. Now that the leaves are all off the trees, what can happen? The winter is here. In December, winter arrives on the shortest day of the year. From this point on, there will be more sunlight with each passing day, but the days are still much shorter than the nights, so the weather gets even colder. The air and the ground are cold. The chilly north wind blows. In some places, there are snowstorms and ponds and lakes freeze. Fields and mountains are covered in a blanket of white. In the morning, the ground and the trees are covered in ice. This is called frost. Brr, it's so cold. Have any of you guys been in the snow yet? Have you had that chance? I know in Florida it doesn't snow here, but you may have had the chance to go up north. But when you're in the snow, you can also go inside later and get warm by the fire. Are you ready for the cold? Life can be harder in the winter for some animals because it's not easy to find food. Many animals like groundhogs and some snakes eat extra food in the summer and in the fall. And then they go to sleep during the winter in the underground tunnels they call burrows. This is called hibernation. Other animals like squirrels don't hibernate, but they often stay in their dens to keep them warm. I bet you always wondered what that little hole might have been in a tree. And you don't know, but there might actually be a squirrel in there. That's what's happening in the cold. And now we've got Jack and Kate they left their room at the beginning of the book when they were thinking about what were the seasons all about and how things got cold and how things got warm and now they're outside. Kate and Jack are still cold from the winter but soon the weather will start to get warmer. Look Jack, 
Do you see the buds sprouting on the tree, says Kate? Spring is almost here. Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is, replied Jack. I found an ant coming out of the ground for food. Looks like it's going to get warmer soon. <laughs>